Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial system. We have x times x plus y plus z equals 3, y times that equals 6, and z times the same thing equals 9. So we're going to be solving for x, y, and z values. Can you guess at this point what the solutions are? They are probably not integers, so it will be hard to guess. Anyways, let's get started. I'll be presenting, I think, two methods. So let's start with the first method. And let's see how this goes. So for my first method, I'm going to do something that probably a lot of people thought about. x plus y plus z is repeated. So we can kind of isolate it uh, in, from all of these equations. So from the first one, x plus y plus z can be written as 3 over x. From the second equation, it can be written as 6 over y. And from the third one, it can be written as 9 over z. So that kind of gives you a ratio among x, y, z. In other words, if x is 1, then y is 2, and z is 3. So from here, we can kind of say the following. If x is 1, then y is going to be twice that to balance out the equation, right? So if x is x, then y is going to be 2x and z is going to be 3x. Make sense? Great. So now from here, what do we get? We get something nice, because we can go ahead and plug these in here, right? Like this is y. Oops. Okay. And this is z. So let's go ahead and do it. x plus y plus z equals x plus 2x plus 3x. That is x plus y plus z. And that is also equal to 3 over x. Right from here, it is equal to 3 over x. The reason why I use that one is because everything is in terms of x. Great. x plus 2x plus 3x is 6x equals 3 over x. Cross multiply, can, first cross cancel maybe. 2x equals 1 over x. And then cross multiplication gives you 2x squared equals 1. And x squared equals 1 half. Okay, I told you x, y, z are not integers. I kind of made it a little hard to guess because a lot of people are like, hey, I got it in 10 seconds. Okay, maybe you did, but it took you a little longer, didn't it? So x squared equals 1 half. Great. So this gives us two solutions. Don't forget, there are two numbers in the real world, in a complex world, whose square equals 1 half. And those numbers are the square root of 1 half, which can be written as 1 over square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2 and the opposite of that number, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And since we know the x values, we can find the y values because we know that y is 2x and z is 3x. So if x is equal to root 2 over 2, then y is going to be 2 times that, which is root 2, and z is going to be 3 times x, which is 3 root 2 over 2. So that's going to give you one order triple. And if x is negative square root of 2 over 2, then y is going to be negative square root of 2, and z is going to be negative 3 root 2 over 2. One thing to keep in mind, if x is negative, all of them are negative, because if you think about it, add x, y, z, you get a negative answer. x is negative, their product is always positive. Make sense? Okay, that kind of checks up with the original equations. That's the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, and... I'm pretty sure you're going to come up with a third method. You guys are very good at it. So let's see. Second method. And I'm going to rewrite the original system. x times x plus y plus z is 3. y times x plus y plus z is 6. And z times x plus y plus z is 9. Okay. At least these are proportional, right? So that gave us good results. I mean, you can change the numbers around and make it even messier, but, you know. So here's how the second method works. And I think it's very different from the first one. We're going to add these equations. And you might be asking, like, why on earth would you do that, right? I'm pretty sure someone will ask that question, right? The reason being, when you add these, you're going to get a common factor. That's the first reason. And the second reason is, icing on the cake, it's even better than that, because that common factor, when it's factored out, Let's see what happens. Let me not spoil the surprise. Okay, so this gives us x times x plus y plus z plus y times x plus y plus z plus z times x plus y plus z. 
What is 3 plus 6 plus 9? Hmm, let's think about it. I think it's 18. Good. Okay. Now, x plus y plus z is a common factor, so I can factor that out, can't I? And when I do, I get the other factor by picking these, right? Those are going to be written inside the parentheses, x plus y plus z. Yay, we got the same thing. This is why we're adding these. Of course, sometimes you may not know what is going to happen, but when you're given a system, especially a polynomial system, add the equations, multiply the equations, subtract two equations at a time, divide them, try to factor, try all these sorts of things because you, you sometimes you never know what's going to give you the result. So it's a trial and error sometimes, and that's perfectly fine. Anyways, so what does this mean? It means something multiplied by itself. It means that thing is squared, right? x plus y plus z is squared equals 18. Now, this is a different method, I think, uh, because we're finding x plus y plus z first. Remember, in the first approach, we found x first, and then we found y and z. So that's why I think this method is very different from the first one. Anyways, enough advertisement about myself. Let's continue. Okay. So you can take the square root of both sides and you get square root of 18 or negative of that. And square root of 18 is basically 18 is 9 times 2. So this is equivalent to 3 root 2. Let's go ahead and write it that way. x plus y plus z is 3 root 2. Or x plus y plus z is negative 3 root 2. So basically, whatever you do, it's just going to be negated. Same thing. Because if x is a solution, then negative x is also a solution. Make sense? You could also go off of that. So how do you find x, y, z from here, though? I just found their sum. But remember the original problem. It gave us something like this, x times x plus y plus z. So if you consider that, x times x plus y plus z is equal to 3. And I know that this is equal to 3 root 2. So x is just going to be from here, 3 divided by 3 root 2, or 1 over root 2, or root 2 over 2. OK, you get the x value. And by using the second equation, y times x plus y plus z equals 6, you're going to get y equals root 2. Same thing, we don't have to go over that again. And for the third one, you're just going to get 3 root 2 over 2. And they are negatives, of course, from the negative side, the dark side of things. You're going to get the opposites. Oops, that's supposed to be a y, not x. And z is going to be negative 3 root 2 over 2. So basically, we have two ordered triples that are solutions with two methods. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.